are the heroes of our time. Whoa, 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 whoa for Sweden. Well done. Uh, this year's Eurovision sees Sweden as the big winner. Like three years ago when Lorien with Euphoria won the top spot. More Euphoria for Sweden this year and why not? It was a great song, great performance, great performer. I won't even pronounce his name but it's written on the bottom of your screen. I'm sure you've watched, or most of you have watched the final and what a show really it was. Now, Go Sebastian, well done to you. He's done really well. He came fifth as was expected. And Greece, what's happening there? Ελλάδα, Ελληνάκια, τι γίνεται? Και πέρσι πατώσαμε, και φέτος πατώσαμε, και το 2012 πατώσαμε. Τι γίνεται ρε παιδιά, μάλλον θα πρέπει να γράψω εγώ κανένα τραγουδάκι μου φαίνεται, μάλλον ο φίλος μου ο Τάσος ο Πέτσας από την Ελλάδα. Το τραγούδι του οποίου, Mother of Mine, πηγαίνει πολύ καλύτερα στα charts της iTunes και μάλιστα έχει παίχτη και σε ε, ραδιόφωνο στο Cardiff της Αγγλίας. Μάλιστα, μήπως τάσο θα πρέπει εσύ να πας στο Eurovision τον επόμενο χρόνο, θα δούμε. Αυτό θα μου το πεις εσύ ο ίδιος. Λοιπόν, um, our special guest at tonight's show, he's young, he's talented, skilled with soccer, he's from Adelaide and that's why he does it professionally as a soccer player. Paul Lizzo, ladies and gentlemen. He plays for the uh, reserves at Adelaide United. He's a rising soccer star, and he was kind enough to have us over at his house for this exclusive interview. Paul Lizzo, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Lizzo, welcome to the Gringley Show. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm very good. That's Thank good. You. Good to hear. Um, Paul, you've, at the age of 20 years, um, you are now playing for one of Australia's most successful clubs, the Adelaide United. Um, how do you feel about all this? Um, it's a very big honour, especially being a local boy here in Adelaide. I know um, a lot of people, uh, especially my age, that want to be playing you know, at the highest level they can. And Adelaide United, you know, it would be a real dream for them. So um, it's a real privilege for me to know how much it means to everyone. And the fact that I get to do it, you know, it means a lot. Sure. And what age did you actually start playing soccer? Um, when I was, I reckon, eight, maybe seven or eight years old, I joined the first team, and I was, um, yeah, I was an outfield player, and then probably at like, I reckon, twelve, I reckon I moved into goalkeeper. Okay. Mm. And when was it that you decided that you wanted to get involved on a more professional level uh, with, with soccer? Um, I don't know. Like, I just. Every time I went to training, I just I loved it, really. And I kept going and going, and I would make this team, and then I would make that team. And then eventually I made uh, the state team, and I was training so often, and I was just still like in love. And then eventually um, it came to a point when I had to go away to another state, and I was like, well, I guess this is like the beginning. I'm so serious. Yeah. yeah that was really the start of it. Sure, and uh, I know that you went to Canberra to uh, train, no, actually to attend some uh, uh, school or the Australian Institute of Sport, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. How was it, how was it there, w being away from home, being away from uh, family? I'll say probably the, well, before I went, you know, I didn't really um, have much say, obviously, because my mum just said yes without me even knowing. Yeah. I was a bit annoyed about that. Ooh. I said bye to my childhood. <laughs> and, I'm sure um, she wanted the best for you, but anyway, yes. And then, um, yeah, so... I didn't, know, I didn't know anyone there. I knew one boy, but like just faintly. Um, so that was a bit nervous for me. But obviously, the first two, three months, you know, everything being brand new to me, it was quite easy to get uh, involved in everything. And then, um, yeah, obviously after that, probably six months in, you know, things start to get a bit repetitive and stuff. And then you start seeing things going on at home, and that's when you start to get a bit homesick. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, was some dramas, you know, obviously broke my parents' chops and um, I was asking to come home every weekend, but yeah, after that you just get into the flow of things again and sure. you, you get into a mood and sure. you keep going. Did you meet a lot of friends over in Canberra? Yeah, definitely. I made a lot of like, you now lifetime friends, you know, everywhere I go now, I can go to Sydney, Melbourne, uh, Brisbane, Perth, you know, I've got friends there. I can always catch up with someone, so... I guess it's something that's uh, always good to have. Sure, know. sure. Paul, uh, obviously it requires a lot of training to, you know, in your field. 
Uh, being a young man and wanting to do everything, you know, go out and party and not just party, but everything else, how do you uh, manage to, um, uh, you know, get around all this training, discipline and your personal life? Yeah, um, obviously when I was 17, that's when I was first uh, signed my first professional contract, so that's when things got a lot uh, more serious. And obviously there was a couple of harsh lessons, harsh lessons I learned, but that's normal, you know. Mm -hmm. They told me it's normal. You're still 17 years old and very, very young. So um, those were things I was expecting. And, you know, obviously I learned from them, and as you grow older, you know, you become wiser and do the smarter things. Sure, sure. In December 2012, you played um, for uh, Adelaide United for the first time against uh, the West uh, Central Coast. Yep. Um, how was that experience and how did the players welcome you? Um, Eugene had gone to the Socceroos, so he left at the start of the week and obviously there was a big uh, fuss about it, you know, um, 17 year old's going to start his first game and obviously the boys obviously knew. So um, yeah, just throughout that whole week they, um, they nurtured me kind of into the spot. They helped me, they gave me confidence, you know, they, um, uh, they just guided me along the way and just taught me the most important thing was to obviously enjoy it and that's what exactly what I did. Sure. Um, what is the, who is your soccer idol? I, should, I have to ask this question. Um, I get this question a lot and it changes I reckon every time. <laughs> but, well at this stage today, who is your favourite at the moment? Oh, it's hard to say. Probably goalkeeping wise, probably Buffon, you know, because obviously he's probably the greatest. Mm -hmm. and he's been gone for so long and still like maintaining that top level. Sure. So that's why I think he's the best. And then, yeah. That's great. Um, with your parents being parents of uh, an uprising uh, soccer star, um, how have they been supportive um, to, towards you in your journey? Um, obviously living at home, you see them every day, so there's no escaping the annoying questions and saying, what are you doing, when are you doing this, mm -hmm. how's this going? So they're always on my back and they're always uh, busting my chops, as I said. So I guess that's their way of showing support, because it's not often you get a hear um, a well done, or good on you for doing this. It's more of a, why aren't you doing this? You should be doing this. It sounds like an ethnic family to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I think we, everyone experiences the same sort of yeah. thing, but that, that's understandable. Yeah. Um, Paul, um, Paul, what are some of the highs and lows of your career so far? Because no one's journey is easy as we hope it is sometimes. Um, I'll start with the highest. I've had a few. Um, my first World Cup, that was probably when I was in the uh, under-17s with the Australia team. That was an experience I'll never ever forget in Mexico, um, just like being a, in a football crazy country mm -hmm. and how just they treated games that were 17 year olds, you know, you'd, you'd get crowds that were bigger in the A-League. It was just for 17 year olds, that was the mind blowing part okay. and um, playing in front of such huge crowds, you know, it was wow. amazing, yeah. So that was one of my highest moments and obviously my debut in the A-League. Sure. That was a proud moment for me. And then, last moment, I reckon, probably my first year as a pro, as I was saying before, I had a bit of struggle, like, um, when I first started, you know, I was, I was like, shocked at, like, the level I hadn't trained with men ever before. Fair so enough. I wasn't really, like, ready. I was speaking to other people, they're like, oh, yeah, trust me, it's normal. First, like, three, four months, you think, what are you doing here, you know, you're not good enough. And then um, I wasn't used to that, so I took that lot like, quite to heart. You know, I was thinking, oh, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do? That was probably like a real rough patch, but <laughs> eventually got through it. So yeah, that's good. And Paul, um, where do you see yourself um, as a soccer player um, in the future? Um, I don't know. No one knows. No one knows. Only the big man knows. The big man knows. <laughs> yeah. If he's a soccer fan, I think he'll be in good hands. Yeah, hopefully it's good places, yeah. That's great, Paul. Uh, thank you so very much for your time. No worries. And uh, all the best with your career with Adelaide United. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Radio 1, η απόλυτη μουσική απόδραση. Oh, God bless him. He's great. Now, to some other uh, interesting news, um, a major infrastructure project is about to get started here in, uh, in Adelaide. In the meantime, if you can hear the birds outside, just don't worry, they're excited about Eurovision as well. Now, uh, we're talking about the extension of South Road, uh, a major infrastructure project which we are anxiously waiting for. Um, it was announced recently that an extra 600 metres of extension will be added to the, uh, the project, which is fantastic news for motorists. Now, more on the story that follows. And those birds outside are really excited about that as well, the South Road extension. Anyway, more More on South Road right now. An extra 600 metres of uninterrupted travel on the proposed South Road multi-million dollar project was announced by the Department of Planning, Transport and Infrastructure. The extra length came after a competitive tender process involving three different companies, Leighton Contractors, Oricon Australia and the South Australian company York Civil. The long overdue infrastructure project boosts a three kilometre stretch of non stop road between Torrens Road in Ridleyton and Ashwin Parade in Torrensville with a $900 million price tag. But the combined investment, which includes the Torrens Road to River Torrens upgrade and the Darlington interchange, exceeds $1.5 billion. According to the department, the combined project will create hundreds of local jobs and drive economic growth by improving the capacity of Adelaide's transport network. The new road in the extension will cater for more than twice the volume of traffic which currently uses the road. Up to 52,000 vehicles use the road daily, but once completed, this section of the north-south corridor will be able to cater for the projected growth of up to 115,000. Construction of the Torrens Road to River Torrens project is due to start in mid-2015 and the project is due for completion by the end of 2018. The Australian and South Australian governments are each providing almost $450 million to deliver the upgrade. And that's all we have time for, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching, whatever time you're watching the show, because it's online, so you can watch it really any time, morning, day, whatever, lunchtime, even in your dreams. Why not? Dream of Gringlish show. Start speaking some Gringlish. The best Gringlish word I've heard so far was kitsadresa. Vre, agorosa kitsadresa. Kitsadresa. What is kitsadresa? God knows what kitsadresa is, and I found out that this, it's this piece of per furniture. See, I'm now getting Gringlish myself. It's this piece of furniture, apparently, in the kitchen. Kitsadresa. No idea. Another good one I've heard was McDonald's. Now, I'm really giving a plug to this really uh, not very nice uh, chain of food. McDonald's, you know what I'm talking about. And the best of all, who would not want to have a hembriga? Hembriga meaning hamburger. Kemnia semidza, of course. You know, semidza ke hembriga. The Greeks, just, that's all they do. They add a letter to the end of an English word, and there you have your Gringlish and your Gringlish show. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a great one.